Joining us now here on the MMA Report is a man that won the CFFC heavyweight title last weekend at, in Philadelphia is Dan Spawn, who, of course, you remember his days from the Ultimate Fighter 4-0 since exiting the UFC. And, uh, you know, we, we all, Dan, we remember you as the light heavyweight. You move up to the heavyweight division. And my understanding of the situation is this was more simply about you couldn't find any fights at 205. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. I mean, we, uh, we've we been looking for a while, and we just had a heck of a time finding any fights in my natural weight class. How frustrating is that for you? Oh, it's extremely frustrating. I mean, you know, the, the whole key to getting back to where you want to be is staying active, staying busy, and fighting. And, you know, it makes it impossible when you find a guy that says he will and then backs out last minute or just, you know, flat out refuses. It's it's almost been eighteen months since your exit from the UFC. I mean, what has the last eighteen months been like for you? Uh, it's been a lot of ups and downs. You know, I mean, you go from being at the best place that you want to be, and uh, you know, get one shot and you're out, and then you know, it's uh, it's been hard. You know, but I've stayed motivated. Uh, I've been wanting to you know do everything I can to get back there and to you know just kind of come out and finish. I tried to finish every fight. I had one decision, but uh, three of them were finishes. And they were, uh, you know, dominant finishes. So, you know, I'm just it's been uh, it's been a fun journey too. So, I know guys always talk about the the lessons they learn throughout your fighting career. What was what was different about the the three losses over your career to the the one loss in the UFC? Was there any main difference of, of lessons learned, or is it just basically uh, you just been maturing as a fighter? Yeah, I mean, there's definitely going to always be differences, but I think you know. The main thing is just, uh, you know, continuing to learn from every time you lose. And uh, I think that's part of when you mature as a fighter is, you know, you learn, you pick up something you did wrong, you know, from each time you lose. And, you know, there, you know, when you get in that big show, sometimes, you know, it can get to you. You can get to all that pressure and you can let it get to you. And I think that's a big thing I learned. And I figured, you know, uh, I'm a lot better at dealing with that. I, I've been training my mental game just like you do jiu-jitsu, just like you do wrestling, just like you do everything else, you know. Um, your mental game is just as important, if not more important, because, you know, 90% of it when you're in that cage is mental. And that's, you know, that's what I learned a lot of. How do you work on the mental side of the game? Uh, you know, it goes into a lot of different things, you know, um, from one, just, you know, how you get up in the morning, how you approach things, you know, your perspective on things and on uh, how you train and your perspective on uh, even how you, from all that to how you talk to yourself, you know, I mean, in your mind, you know, most people, if they think about it, you know, they talk to themselves. Um, if they talk to somebody else like that, it would almost be a crime. You know what I mean? Like when you mess up on something, you're so hard on yourself. And you have to understand, you know, you made a mistake, but, you know, look at the positives. Now you know you know you made a mistake, so you can fix it, you know. Did you surprise yourself in going up to heavyweight at all in that fight? Um, yes and no. I mean, uh it's always good, and, you know, you, you want to say kind of surprised, but realistically, this is what me and my coaches, uh, we've been planning for, for this fight. So, I mean, we knew we'd be the more athletic, the uh, faster fighter, and, you know, all around, you know, like I said, the better athlete. So, we were just waiting for our opening to uh, pounce. And in terms of, it's obviously, you win a title. Is the plan to defend that title? Is the plan to go back to 205? Or is it just simply of, I'll wait and see what gets offered to me? Uh, yeah, it's a little bit of waiting. But, you know, we're I'm also talking to my management. And uh, we're trying to see where we can go as far as, you know, what doors this might open for me. And uh, if the possibility to jump in there for UFC at 205 was there, that, that would be great. And uh, Or even heavyweight, I mean. At this point, you know, I'll jump in whatever they need, honestly. So, uh, you know, that's always good. And if not, then, yeah, I've got another another fight on here on my contract with CFFC, and I'll definitely need to defend my belt. Uh, one of the – internally in the, the regulatory side of, of mixed martial arts is this kind of this big push for a cruiserweight division, 225 pounds. Would that be a, a kind of a perfect division for you, or do you feel like we don't necessarily need that division in MMA? I think that, you know, there'd, there'd be a lot of value in that division as well. I mean, you know, there's a big gap, you know, 205 all the way to 265. So, I mean, you know, there's a there's a big gap in that heavyweight division where, you know, there's a lot of mismatches just based off of sheer size and weight. So, 
I mean, yeah, 225, that would be ideal because, you know, for me, I'd be healthy walking around where I'm not dehydrated. I'd feel strong. So, I mean, yeah, that'd, that'd be great to me. I mean, obviously, every guy's goal is to get to the UFC and, and the weight and the IV band has really been a big, big topic for you. Have you even thought about that in terms of, you know, of what that might mean for you if you got that call to go to the UFC? Um, yeah, I mean, I've definitely thought about that. It would it would definitely put a little more pressure on the cut, but at the same time, you know, I, I've i always been really uh, disciplined and strict on what I eat, and uh, when it comes down to it, you know, anything you put in your body is the same as training. You know, you move forward when you're training and you get better, and same thing when you eat. If you eat something that's garbage, you know, that makes it harder for you to cut, harder for you to get off, then you're not really moving forward. So for me, I you know, it's not too much of a factor. I can... I can figure out a way to get to that weight, whether I use IV or not. Fighters always talk about that cheat meal. What's the go-to cheat meal for you? Uh, Five Guys Burger, I think. (laughs) Those are the best for me. Uh, I don't usually eat those at all, any type of burger, you know, obviously for quite a while on fight camp. and So, uh, yeah, the first thing I'd like to go to is just go right in there, take my boys there, and have a burger with them. So it's fun. For obviously, we're we're a week out from from your win there at CFFC fifty three. What's what's life for you right now? Is it just kind of uh, sitting back and enjoying, or are you already back in the gym? Uh, yeah, actually, I've already had about uh, five workouts since my fight in the gym. So you know, five or six. Uh, been I just came back from jujitsu today, and uh, so yeah, I mean, you know, for me, there's really no break. I just. Uh, I just jump right back in there. It's a good lesson I learned from the Ultimate Fighter when I was on the show. I mean, we fight, you know, three times in six weeks, so you don't really have a chance to sit back and relax. So it was a good good experience. Earlier in the show, I had Eric Spicely on, who, who's going out to the, the tryouts for the Ultimate Fighter, which are on Monday in Las Vegas. Uh, for someone who, who has gone through that, and uh, if you had any advice for a guy that's looking to go to the Ultimate Fighter, what would it be? Oh, I would say, you know, especially when you're out there going to Vegas, you know, the best thing to do is just, uh, you know, be yourself and let your personality come out. And, you know, don't don't try to act like you're this or act like you're that because they, they typically have an idea of what they want on a show. And if, you know, if you're acting like you're something else, then they might already have that spot filled. You know, just I'd say be yourself, uh, you know, do the best you can do. And then when it comes time to show what you can do on the mats, uh, you know, give it your all because I think – tryouts are only like two or three minutes long grappling so you know anybody that's an athlete should be able to just go you know full go that whole time so just go out there prove yourself and uh you should do great what was your biggest takeaway from that experience was it just simply that the training that you got in uh yeah that and uh you know like i said it, it was a good uh experience as far as you know being able to handle the uh I guess just the uh, rough schedule of going in there uh, fighting and then literally the next day you go into the gym in the morning and you're right back to training just like, you know, you never fought. So it it puts it, uh, helps you handle fights a little bit differently. So it makes you think of them a little less uh, like they're this gigantic buildup. I'm always kind of, one of the things I mentioned when when a, a fighter has a loss on his record, is there a particular fight? that you look back right now and said, man, I would kill to have that rematch. Oh, I mean, definitely. I mean, I'd say majority of mine, since uh, I think uh, all of my losses except for two were split decisions. So, I mean, I would love to go back and get to do, to see that again and, you know, look at it through the eyes I have now for sure. But, you know, there's a lot of things that go up to fights, uh, injuries and things like that that people don't know about. So, you know, if, of course, if I could go back and do some of those fights healthy where I wasn't injured, I would I would definitely be able, love to do that. Is the the knockout uh, TKO win last uh, last weekend the the biggest highlight of your career, or was there is there another fight that at, at this moment you look at and say, you know what, that's at this point is my career defining moment? Oh, well, for me, you know, I think uh, yeah, I'd say yeah, it is just because uh, where I'm at right now, like. Uh, you know, every time you get in the cage, you're your best you. That's how it should be. I mean, you know, all my experience I've had in my past, all the highlight reel knockout, highlight reel performances I've done, you know, they all build up to me now. So I would say, yeah, the, the last time I was in the cage and the last time I performed that well and knocked somebody out like that, that's that's definitely my, like, highlight right now for the best I've done, for sure. 
Dan, I really appreciate you coming on the show this week. Good luck to you, and hopefully uh, you're able to find that 205-pound fight because I know it's been a little bit of an issue for you. Oh, definitely. Thank you for having me on, and it's, uh, it's always great to be on, and I definitely would love to fight at 205 again, hopefully, soon.